Hey guys, time itself here. Welcome to some Kerbal Space Program. We're going to try and redirect an asteroid as part of Kerbal Space Program's new Asteroid Redirect Mission, a minor update in between major ones. Anyway, first things first, I need a pusher. Something to get up there and then push that asteroid around to put it into a stable orbit, or maybe even prevent it from hitting Kerb in the first place. You know, I say pusher, but it's probably easier if we pull, and so I've got the engines pointed backwards. We'll see how that works out. But once I've got the upper stages built, it's time for the lifting stages, and thankfully that is a lot easier with the help of these new absolutely massive parts. There's a whole other size scale for the aim, basically. It does make things quite a bit easier, but I'm not quite sure how to use them. This is, this is my first try at this. At this point, I figure I'm ready for a test. After all, it's Kerbal Space Program, this is what we do. We test it. And if it explodes, well, that was fun to watch. And if it works, well, great. It does look like I needed a couple more struts. Damn it, Curl Space Program, need more struts. Anyway, the real dilemma is that the solid boosters and the extra fuel tanks on the sides that I've added are going to run out about the same time, and I'm not sure how to stage it. If I'd throttled it a little differently, it'd come in a different order. But that's okay, we get up to our last stage of our lift, and, well, it doesn't quite put us into orbit. So I find myself in this precarious situation of needing to turn the entire spacecraft around as fast as possible and get those engines fired back up before I fall back into the atmosphere. It's okay, I make it. I want to point out though that I have a bit over 12,000 meters per second delta V at this point. That is obscene, and it's largely thanks to these very efficient engines. But once I get myself into orbit, I figure it's time to find an asteroid to go try and wrangle. And so I find one that crosses Kerbin's sphere of influence that isn't too terribly massive. It's a class C, which is what, 7 to 10 meters, I think. And I realize, wait a second, that's completely out of the plane. I'm, I'm going around the equatorial of the planet, and this is going almost underneath the pole. Uh, that's going to be tricky. I have lots of delta V, but actually figuring out how to get there at the right time is going to be kind of tricky for me. It looks like I have some more to learn about orbital mechanics, even KSP's simplified orbital mechanics. Anyway, this plane change, not sure how to do it, or at least efficiently. I've got the delta V to actually do it, and I probably could have just started burning perpendicular and then back and forth, and even not very efficiently, I still could have gotten there, but it was just so frustrating. I tried a moon assist. Hey, let's see what happens if I do that. No. And again, messing around with the new nodes for a while, trying to figure things out. Quick saves, been all, and I just said, you know what? Uh, I'm going to get out here, but in the end, I think I'll just ditch everything, turn on this little ion engine that I brought just to make sure my pilot could get back home, and just go ahead and, and leave, and we'll come back with a better plan. Heading over to the tracking station, we find another Class C asteroid. This one's coming very close to Kerb and should be a bit easier to get to. Uh, less than a thousand kilometers? Am I reading that? Wow. Alright, if I can't get that one, I don't know if there's any hope for me. But I need to figure out what plane it's going to be in so that I can launch into the right plane so that I don't have that whole issue with not knowing how to get there. We'll just get around that whole issue. I use a little time acceleration to wait for it to get into Kerbin's sphere of influence. Since it's coming so close, uh, that seems like an okay option. And I can see that I'm going to need to launch into a nearly polar orbit, but that's something I can do. If I launch knowing that's what I need to do, it's going to be a lot easier. So, back to the spaceship. Now, the only change I've made to the upper polar stage is to add a couple lights, just in case we encounter that asteroid at night. I want to be able to see it, and otherwise I've uh, made a little bit larger lifter stage. Hopefully this will be adequate. Well, let's go ahead and launch. The first stage works much better this time, and although I do have to spend a minute trying to figure out which direction north-northwest is because I really can't read the degree markings on the nav ball, nonetheless I figure it out and go ahead and finish off the first stage without any real issues. Get on to the second stage and I have plenty of delta V to get myself into orbit. Not the case last time where I had to uh, spin around the upper stage the last minute and realize those engines I had pointed upwards with good reason. Actually they now need to be pointed pointed uh, backwards so you can go ahead and finish. Yeah, I didn't have that issue this time. Plenty of delta V in this lift stage and I get myself nearly into the right plane with the asteroid. From here I can use my extremely efficient engines to go ahead and make the necessary burns and elongate the orbit and start getting out in the right direction. They may be efficient but they do take a long time to burn and I can't throttle them all the way up because they'll overheat. So this is a bit tedious. 
Of course, it's not just a matter of getting to the right place. Not even the right place, the right time. No, right place, right time, with the right velocity. So you match the target, and then go ahead and rendezvous with it. I'm not terribly good with rendezvous, but I think meeting up with this asteroid might actually be a little bit easier than our standard satellite. Yeah, you gotta get into the right plane, but once you're out there, you get plenty of time to go ahead and match velocities with it, and meet up. Whereas if you're going around the planet, you have to basically wait again another orbit if you miss it. Anyway, thanks to some quick saves and quick loads, eventually I managed to get my rendezvous. That's pretty close, uh, within 10 kilometers, I think. But I'm only going at 93 meters per second, and the target's coming at me from behind at like 350. And so as it goes past me, hopefully it doesn't hit me, that's unlikely, I need to go ahead and match velocities with it and try and catch up to it. But once I got within 10 kilometers of the target, getting to within 2 and then spotting it, proved to be, well, a bit tricky, and it took me a while to realize that, okay, the nav ball gives me the direction to the target, the direction I'm headed, and my relative velocity to the target, but it doesn't say positive or negative, and so it actually took a minute to realize, okay, how do I tell if I'm getting closer or going further away? Eventually, I do manage to spot my asteroid. But in my eagerness to meet up with my newfound friend, I forget that I need to pay more attention to the direction I'm actually going, rather than the direction I'm burning as otherwise I just end up, you know, missing the target, right? And uh, embarrassingly, I go ahead and fly past it, and then come back again, and then past it. Well, you, you get where this is going. And eventually the lack of RCS, I don't know why I forgot to put RCS on this, becomes quite a pain. And because of the rather large amount of fuel that I have, turning my craft around uh, takes a little bit, and so I have to burn from a little ways out, spin 180 degrees to get the claw in the right direction, and then hopefully it will go ahead and latch onto the asteroid. Unfortunately, my first attempt, while it looks pretty good, it just barely skims off the asteroid, and I bounce off and, well, I have to make another attempt at it. So once again, I get a little ways away from the asteroid, go ahead and burn towards it, I'm gonna only be moving at like 0.5 meters per second, turn the craft 180 degrees around so that the engines are now pointed so that I can pull the asteroid, and wait for my claw to hopefully grab onto it this time. Absolutely nothing I can do at this point but wait and hope the claw grabs on and that I don't crash. Instead, successful rendezvous and I have grabbed my first asteroid. I'd say it looks like a pretty good catch there. Now it's time to move the asteroid into a stable Kerbin orbit so that it doesn't leave Kerbin's sphere of influence and I can get back to it. Go ahead and study it and do all that science. So I go ahead and fire up the main engines but, um, well, I'm looking at the number of the readouts, and, okay, the, the apoaps and periaps are changing a little bit, but not much, not really at all. And my engines aren't actually doing anything. I know this asteroid's massive, but I should be at least having some effect on it, but I'm not. I've got plenty of torque with those reaction wheels that I can point the asteroid in whatever direction I want. Uh, that torque is kind of funny in KSP, but that's how it works. And I'm pulling the asteroid rather than pushing it, so I shouldn't be making it spin around unnecessarily. But I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but I do eventually get to the point where it's time to jettison those extra fuel tanks. I kind of wondered what was going to happen. I was worried they were going to hit the asteroid and bounce back into me. But no, they just go off harmlessly uh, out to the sides on their way. So no problem there. That's, that's good to know. At first, I thought the asteroid was simply too massive for me to have much impact on, but it turns out that wasn't the issue. No, the, something with the engines pointed directly into the asteroid meant that there was actually no net thrust, and all the numbers just moving around a little bit I was seeing was actually due to the rotation. And so I couldn't use my big engines to do anything. Instead, I had to fall back on what had been my uh, return engine, this little ion drive, in order to actually push the asteroid around. And yeah, a little tiny ion drive. I actually don't have enough to power it at full power, only about a third, maybe a little more depending on solar. And so instead, yeah, I get to use that to push this gigantic asteroid around. <laughs> it's a little thing you would normally use for just a probe. Now I am pushing instead of pulling, but the thrust is so minor that my reaction wheels are actually able to keep me pointed in the direction I want to go. I don't have a whole lot of maneuverability, but as, at least still I'm not making the thing spin around in circles. Eventually, I do manage to slow down the asteroid enough so that it is in orbit around Kerbin. Now, it's going all the way out about as far as Minimus is, so I'm going to have to try and do something to get it back into a more useful orbit, but at least it's not escaping on me at this point. 
Now I have plenty of xenon fuel left for my ion drive. I've used less than half of it, but my patience is wearing thin. This asteroid isn't going anywhere at this point, so I decide to go ahead and leave it, come back with another designed uh, asteroid puller or pusher, whatever it may be, and deal with it at that point when it's, because uh, <laughs> seriously, I, I mean, I, I turned on the ion drive and then I left to go make dinner. As soon as I let go of the asteroid, I went ahead and burned to get back to Kerbin, and it seems like my polar orbit is going to uh, mean I end up on the North Pole. I haven't been there before, so <laughs> new things all around. I want to say I really like the look of this cloud mod for Kerbin. I think it's volumetric clouds or something like that. But, uh, it does look really, really nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Kerbin just seems a little incomplete without the, uh, without the cloud cover. Not as big a fan of the lights, but I definitely like the clouds. Oh, and the two other mods that I'm using are pretty obvious, Alarm Clock and Engineer. Nothing major, but it does make life a lot easier. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this interesting. A little something a little different from me, but I certainly do enjoy some Kerbal Space Program. Anyway, we'll probably get back to some more FPS next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.